Hey, welcome in. Well, it was must-win time for the Abilene Rough Riders tonight. They came into the game against the Roughnecks at the very bottom of the standings, already up a touchdown in the first one. Ty Sellers finds his man in the end zone. 13-0 Rough Riders at that point. And the theatrics here, the elbow drop on the football. Rough Riders also doing it on the defensive side of the ball. The Roughnecks looking to get things going through the air. But LaJuan Edwards is there. He's going to pick this thing off, races it back up the sideline. Eventually, he gets forced out of bounds. Everything going the Rough Riders way early on. On the goal line, Sellers hands this one to Jeremiah Turner, and he bulldozes his way in for the touchdown. 19-0 at that point. Abilene, they tack on the extra point, 20 to nothing. And at last check, Abilene up by 20, 54-34 in the fourth. Hey, let's just stay right here in town. The Prairie Dogs just trying to get a win. They've lost their last three, taking on the Colts out at Driggers Field. Adam Rowe on the mound for the Prairie Dogs in the first. Daryl Jones grounds this one to Wilson Batista, and he throws him out at first. We're still scoreless. So in the bottom half of the inning, Batista says, hey, let me bat. He sends this one deep to left field. Home run for Batista, early 1-0 lead for Abilene. And to the top of the second, two on for Jason Croslin. This one's deep in the gap. It's going to split the outfielders. And Corey Patton and Landon Kent both come around to score. Two-run double for Croslin. Next batter, Jamar Walton. He pops this thing up, and it has eyes. It somehow falls in between everyone out in left field. That scores Crossman 3-1 at that point. Colts and the Colts would keep their foot on the gas. At last check, it was 5-4 Colts in the A. And let's go over to the big leagues. Rangers taking on the Tigers. 0-0 first inning. Justin Grimm, he wants that pitch back. It goes over Leonis Martin's head. Rattles around in center field. That's going to bring around Austin Jackson and Quentin Berry. Cabrera's 22nd double of the season. 2-0 Detroit in the first. Later in the inning, Delmont Young at the plate. And just a little looping base hit to center field, but good enough to bring Cabrera around. Young's 26th. RBI of the season, 3-0 Tigers, and Grimm would get lit up for five runs in the first, his only inning, and at last checks, Texas was on the verge of losing, down 8-2 in the ninth. And over to the Astros, playing at Minute Maid Park, they've won two straight, taking on the Padres, Carlos Lee, just getting off the DL, but he looks fine, feels fine, this one's over that tall fence in left field, 2-0 Astros at that point, and we go to the top of the third, 4-3 Padres, Logan Forsythe. He sneaks this one past Lee at first base. That's an RBI single for him. His fifth of the season. He would advance to second on the throw home. 5-3 Padres at that point. And this one stayed close. But the last update, we have the Padres up 7-6 in the eighth. So definitely a lot of baseball going on. And the Rough Riders were back in town. So a lot of fun stuff going on today. Megan, Mike. Hey, good evening. David has the night off. Well, the wait is finally over for Texas Ranger fans. When Texas signed Roy Oswalt at the end of last month, it wasn't as much if, but more when he would make his first start. And that will be tonight, the 34-year-old right-hander making his debut at seven against the Colorado Rockies. Oswalt gave up two runs in six innings in his last tune-up start for Round Rock. His last major league outing was last September in the NLDS for the Phillies. Tonight, he'll be looking for his 160th career victory. And from the big leagues to the United League, the Prairie Dogs are getting the sticks going down in San Angelo. Abilene taking game four of their eight game series, nine to seven over the Colts last night. The game was tied up early, but the Prairie Dogs finished strong, getting late offense from Joe White and Kyle Nichols. They had back-to-back -back homers in the game to seal the deal. The win puts Abilene one game below 500 at 13 and 14. Game five gets started in San Angelo at seven. And LeBron James has millions of fans and almost as many doubters. He's one of the most polarizing figures in sports, but there was no question which side he was on in the finals. That would be the winning side. Of course, LeBron finally got one last night, and there wasn't much doubt about the outcome in Game 5. The Miami Heat put it on Oklahoma City, winning by 15 and clinching the NBA title. James was also named the most valuable player of the series. And if you think losing to Dallas in the finals last year didn't motivate him, think again. You know, the best thing that happened to me last year was us, uh, you know, the best film I ever had. That's it for the sports. Back to you, Bob. Hey, good evening. Wimbledon got started today and five-time champion Venus Williams. Oh, well, she didn't really play like one, taking on Elena Vesnina in the first round. 
Set point in the first. Vesnina just teeing off on Williams' serve. She took it 6-1 to one in the second. Vesnina up 5-3 and keeping Williams out wide. She gets the volley winner here, one of her 17 on the day. And Williams just didn't seem right. Later match point, Williams just meekly into the net. Vesnina can't believe it. She goes on to win this one, 6-1, 6-3. Williams not helping her cause out a whole lot. She had 23 unforced errors. This her earliest loss at Wimbledon since her first appearance that 15 years ago. And Maria Sharapova picking up where she left off after winning the French Open in the first set against Anastasia Rodia Nova Sharapova in the far court. She hammers it down the line. There's a reason why she's the number one seed at Wimbledon. She took the first set and here in the second in the far court. She's moving well. Check out the angle on that drop shot. Cross court just too much for Rodia Nova. And later Sharapova leading 4-1 in the near court and she's showing some patience from the baseline. Eventually she's going to take this backhand down the line. Had Rodinova all mixed up, all Sharapova in this one. She wins at 6-2, 6-3, 23 winners on the day. She will play Svetlana Pirinkova in the second round. And to the men's draw, American John Isner finding himself in a five-set battle with Alejandro Faya. Four all in the fifth, Isner returning, but he loses his balance so Faya just flicks this one into the open court. He takes the 5-4 lead and Isner in trouble after being up two sets. And match point for Faya with Isner serving in the near court. That forehand goes wide. Faya takes a decisive set 7-5. He had 39 winners. Isner nearly doubled him up with 76 of his own, but the 49 unforced errors for Isner were the real story of the match. And from the grass to the turf, the Rough Riders are finally back in town getting a few extra days to get ready for tonight's game with the West Texas Roughnecks. Rough Riders' last game was an eight-point loss to Amarillo, and the last time they were back at home, that being way back on May 28th. They're three and four on the season and are in, currently in sixth place. The Rough Riders, they took the first meeting between these two teams, 39-37. And the Prairie Dogs are in town tonight wrapping up, I know this sounds crazy, their eight-game series with the Colts. Mike, Megan?